Hi everybody, welcome to the Coleco Atom for Dummies. This is a series of videos I'm going to make where I take the time to explain various aspects of the Coleco Atom, hardware, software, peripherals, how they work, in a very toned down, as little as possible, as little techno babble as possible, so that anybody can get it. It's not an aspiration on anybody, an aspersion, I'm sorry, it's not an aspersion on anybody by saying it's the Coleco Atom for dummies. It's more of a play on the dummies manuals that exist out there. So, I hope you enjoy this video. So what we have here is an obviously very filthy roller controller for the ColecoVision. The roller controller is a nice little system. You plug your joysticks into here and it gives you the ability of using a trackball and fire buttons here. And it also lets you switch from modes. You can switch this to joystick mode and this is up, down, left and right. Or you switch to roller mode and then the up and down is the left spinner and the right and left is the right spinner or vice versa. So, it is obviously very filthy. I've already tested it. It does work. It has a few issues, though, besides the fact that it's filthy. And it's got a 9 here. I'm trying to get out. Let me get this 9 out of here. The other issue it has is that this cable here has been broken at one time, and somebody spliced it back together. So, I'm going to take this apart, and I'm going to solder it correctly, and then I'm just going to have to see if I can give me some shrink tubing put on it. If not, then we'll do something with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart. Taking a roller control apart is relatively easy. You flip it over and there are seven screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven Phillips screws. Just pull those out. As such. Electric screwdriver saves so much time. It saves skin on your palm too, so you don't sit there and dig your palm up. Wow. Removing the screws. Now that should be enough. Then we flip it over. And come on. Three screws come out, like so. And then this cover just let me just get that over out of the way. This cover just lifts up off of here. And oh yeah, she's a very filthy baby. Look at the mess in there. Filthy. So let's just take our little cue ball here. And I wonder, will an eight ball fit in here? Can you replace this with an eight ball? I bet you could. Because this feels just like a plain old cue ball. Take that out of there. Take this bearing out with this little axle. Don't lose that. Take this setup out. This is two bearings. And your control or in your diffraction grading on and off switch, whatever it was, it goes through this little light switch here and it detects the motion based on that. Then take this one out to a bearing. We're gonna just clean those all off. But first we're gonna strip this box down to get it clean. Take these out. There are two different types of this one, two different heights. The shorter one goes to the front, the taller ones go to the back. Don't put it together and then find out you put the wrong one in. Now we're going to unscrew some screws. Loosen some wires there. We're going to remove this screw back, this switch, this board back here, which is a sensor. Put screws to the side and then remove the screws over in here. There are two different types of roller controller boards that I know of. This one, and one that has these that plugs attached to the board instead of attached to cables. I don't know if this was before or after the fact, but this is a better design because the other one has the joystick plugs attached to the board and when you fight and force it in and out, in and out, you eventually break them loose. And I had to fix one because it was like that. But this, on the other hand, these are 
there's little tabs down here that hold in place. Take a screwdriver, slowly, gently bend the tab forward. So that's it. Go. Don't want to go too far and break the plastic now. I am slowly just I'm lifting it with my thumb and I'm bending that plastic forward a little bit just to have it get let go. I'm trying not to get in your way here, but I gotta see what I'm doing a little better. There we go. It's loose. It's just stuck on the other side. Come on, you can come out. Might have to do the other side too, the same way, just to get it to get right here. Come on. There it is. Now that one's loose enough to where I should be able to get it out. Do this side the same way. You see that little tab there? Just kind of work it out of that tab without breaking it. All right. Now I'm going to see if I can get this thing to come out easily. One's loose. Come on. Go in here with this screwdriver on the other tab. It's not the easiest thing to video, but if you're ever fixing this, you'll see immediately what I'm talking about. These tabs holding it in place. There, had to get a finger under it so I could lift while I was popping the tab. Now who's holding in place? Who's stuck now? Ah, oh, we got this right here too. Staring me right in the face, a little switch. That has to come off. There. Now we're down to plastic. So we can take that out. We'll give that a good brush down and I'll spray the contact, make sure everything's nice and clean. As I said, this works. And then we got in here, we, what we got there? We got a dead bee. And a bunch of other gunk. These are going to have to get washed out in the sink before I scrub them. Both so I'm going to pause this and I'll go scrub them in the sink and then I'll be back and we'll clean the other stuff. Alright, so now the case is in front of the fan drying. I'm going to just take my lightly dampened toothbrush and I'm just going to brush the dirt and grime off the board here. Now you can, if you so desire, take circuit boards and wash them aggressively like in a dishwasher, but the issues you may have is water gets down inside these switches and then they're screwed. So be careful if that's what you want to do. I have washed, um, what you call it, circuit boards in the sink. I just dump them in the sink with hot water, let them soak for a bit, take them out, rinse them down really good, and then stick them in front of a fan blowing on real high to get the water out. And it does work. But this right here, this is not built on grime as much as it's just gunk. So I'm just going to clean it up really good. Just stuff that's settled down from sitting for so long. I just want to get the build up off of it. And nothing on the other side to worry about. Then what I'm going to do is, these all worked when I test them, so I'm not going to touch them. I'm not doing that. And this worked too. So, you know what? I would normally spray contact cleaner on them, but they're working right now, so I'm not going to affect them. Everything worked fine on this when I used it, when I went through the test. So I'm not going to, but if they don't work, these do pop out. You can pop these out and clean them inside. So that's what I'm going to do with that. Um, this right here, I'm going to have to solder this back. I'm going to have to get me some more shrink tubing. I don't think I have any shrink tubing here to put over it. Because I would solder it, then I'd put a shrink tube over the top to seal it. So I'm going to pause this, go get the other parts and bring them over. Alright, so now here's the base. And we're going to reassemble it now. It's going to go back to where they're the same way it can't part. These I have to get down into. See the little snaps right here in the tabs? They have to be attached to that. Can I do it this way? 
Maybe I can. I wonder if I can do it. <laughs> you know, I'm so afraid to put too much pressure on it. I don't want to snap anything. Hey, it went in. I guess you can do it. At least one of them that way. Get the other one started. Yeah, get it lined up. Little pinholes. It's hard to see the pinholes that it's got to go in. There's one. All right, and we've got one more on this side. I gotta get my finger under this circuit board to put pressure in down over here to line it up. Come on, you can do this. Alright, maybe we won't go this way. We'll go this way. The other one went this way. That way. Okay, so one's going the back first, then the front. So the front must have more flex than the back one. And that goes over there. And that is in place. So let's put that in so it doesn't wobble around on me while I'm doing other things. Wrong way. Don't want to torque it down, so that's why I'm pushing the button when it gets close so that. So I don't go too hard. Next thing you know, I got a broken circuit board because that would not be a good day. Now it looks like one here. And one over here. Now I may be mistaken about these on the other board. I could have sworn in that these were attached to this top here. I could be mistaken. Maybe there's only one design. This is only the third roller controller I've had apart. Third or fourth. And this is only this. Ooh, not too far. Yeah, see that torque? Too much torque wants to twist it and break thing. Come on, loosen. So yeah, this is the only second or third roller controller I've ever completely disassembled. Most of them I get down to just a certain point that I don't do any further. But this one I've disassembled like the other. The other one was the repair and this one is the clean. So we're getting there. This comes over here because that one, that used that little peg right here. Or standoff or what do you want to call it. Use that as a strain relief. So I got to make sure I get on that. Get on over for a second. There you go. Get this one lined up to the little holes there. The sensor. All right, and this in here. So that's assembled there. And this goes the same way over here. Now all the boards assembled. Now what I need to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to look at this. Make sure there's no rust on the outside. There's not. I'm going to take. <laughs> lubricant. I thought I had some lubricant. I thought I had a straw on it. So. I have to do it the hard way. I'll take my lubricant there. I'm just going to spray a little bit in here. It's almost empty, so it's not coming out too fast. Get all the excess off of it. I just want it on the bearing, not on the outside. Like so. Now this right here, I'm going to have to sand that. You see that? Rust there? I don't want that there. So let's. These do come apart. You take and slowly twist them. 
they come off and I can put the bearing in here so now I just have that there now I'm going to sand that to get rid of the excess get rid of that rust Take a piece of sandpaper like so. How do I want to do this? I guess I'll both sand it. I just want to get rid of the roughness on there. Get back to being down to smooth metal. Because all that little roughness, you will it will translate over into the controller itself, and you'll feel it. Every little rough spot. I'm just moving the excess, the rust on there. Then put these back. I'm going to oil them. Ooh, I'm out of lubricant. Uh, all right. I'm out of that one, so I'm going to use this one. This is sewing machine oil. It's the same concept. It's just I squirt it out instead of spray it out. They all work basically the same way. Sewing machine oil is actually easier to put on. And it really works well. So this gets reassembled. Um, bearings go in towards that part, so the flats on the outside. Then you take and just set this on here. Push this in. Twist a little bit. Bearing goes in there like so. Then you would take this and you set this in here. Yep. Get over that bearing. And like so. So, make sure it's got a nice good spin there, clean the excess off of it, and the excess oil. I'm going to do the same with the other one. Bearing off, taking, put my fingers behind this, I'm slowly going to turn the axle here and work it off very gently. I do not want to break anything. because I don't know if you can get replacements for these without salvaging it out of another one. And again, I'm going to get that rust off there. If not get it off, at least make it so it doesn't have any edge to it, so that you won't feel it when you're spinning the ball. Like so. Wipe her off. Take my oil a little bit of oil down in here like so bearings in towards the, the what do you want to call that part then that back on there put this in place okay get back here Get back on there. Okay, one of these bearings, see how it doesn't want to keep spinning? One of the bearings is catching up on it a little bit. So let's see if we can do something to help that. Actually, it looks like the yeah, this wasn't in all the way, the, the sensor pin. There we go, there we go, that's much better. Now we got the cue ball. Let's spray it with some Windex here. Take my rag and just scrub it. I really do think it would be awesome if I had an 8-ball to replace this with. I'm going to see if I can come up with one. I think that would be awesome to have an 8-ball in there instead of a cue ball. But there, yeah, the cue ball is clean. It sets in there. See, it's got a little staining from age. I mean, maybe some more of this could come off if I scrub a little harder. She spins nicely now. Now I'm going to take the little switches. Give them a quick wipe off. Let's we'll see which one's big or tall. If this is a tall one. Tall ones go up to the on the top two. 
short ones go in the bottom. The reason I'm stressing this is I reassembled one with them wrong. And then I had to take it all apart and put it back together. So you don't want to, if you can remember to always make sure you put them in right, you'll never have to take things, put things back together. So there we go with that. Get in there correctly. I've got any more dust on this thing. It's a little bit of dust still. Even after all the scrubbing I gave, it's still some dust in there. Now that that's assembled, let's just do a quick rock look over, make sure everything's assembled. Look at my screws, make sure I don't have any screws right there. Then I take the base, which I'm going to just wipe down. It's got a little bit of water in the cracks, even though it sat in front of the fan. But not the base, the top. I didn't scrub the outside of the case yet. That's why it looks ugly. Put that on there. Make sure all buttons are moving. You don't want to close it up and then find out you did it wrong with the button. You know, hold it and flip it over. Just drop some screws in the holes in here. First three, at least, the center ones. Yeah, that one's not seating in there. The magnetic screwdriver. Get you out a little bit. Come out. There you go. Going on. Then the four outside screws. Now besides the wire that I had to repair, the only other damage I see on this thing is there's a little chip right here. And unfortunately I was hoping to find a piece of plastic inside that I could then use acetone to weld it back on, but it wasn't in there. So let's get the bottom cleaned off here while we have it up. See what I can get cleaned off here. I'll get that paint off there too maybe. With some alcohol. edges. Get rid of all the dirt and dust that's been building up for 40 years. Now let's see, can I get rid of that? Let's see, let's try a little bit of, where you at? Let's try a bit of isopropyl alcohol, see if that will get rid of it. Boy, that get it. Yeah, that'll get rid of it. Let me just let it spray and soak for a minute. I'm going to spray it one more time. I'm going to take the little scrubby. It's seen better days. There we go. That's done. I always rinse off your rubbing alcohol. Don't leave it on there because sometimes the isopropyl alcohol will leave a white sheen behind as it dries. And that's messy. So there, the bottom's been cleaned off. Now we're going to do the top. The top's going to be the same way. Spray it down good. Take my toothbrush. Just go in the edges that are harder to get to. The name plate, or the name the controller plate and start wiping down.
as you can see, it's been played with hard. Got all these scratches on there from people playing. It probably like people wear rings and they're scratching the ring on it as they're playing. Really, is no way of fixing that. You could take armor all with not armor. Is armor all? Uh, yeah, armor all. I, I'll show you what I, I got. Whites that I have for, that I use for car. And you can also use them. Corners here, so dirt. Got dust build up in the corners. I think now in the scrubbing. You can take armor all like this. These protective whites. You can take one of these here. And you can wipe down the plastic. Give it a nice shine if you want. I've done this before. Take and wipe it down, just like you do with your car. After you clean it, take and wipe it down and take your, I just wipe off the excess. It won't hurt anything, makes it look pretty. And there we go. Now the last thing I need to do is I have to repair that broken wire. And then she's good to go. I'm curious, it's almost as if someone, well, I guess I thought someone might have cut it to make a longer wire. I don't know why they cut it. But, we're going to fix it. Alright, so now we're going to fix this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slice off the bad section. The cable does have a white line on it, so I know which ones go back together. And I want these to stagger a little, so I'm going to... Pull them apart. I'm going to do about that much of a stagger. Same thing on this side here. I see the white one going down, so. Come here. Don't bending. And the white one's going there, so. We're going to stagger that one right there. Alright. So that's what we got. Now we're going to strip off a little bit of wiring on each one. Not much, because I'm soldering them. So I don't need a lot of wire exposed because I'm going to solder them together. Just enough wire to get a good joint. Don't make the mistake of not putting this on first. If you don't put your shrink wrap on first, then you're going to be screwed. And what we're going to do is I'm going to take this. I'm going to, where's my white line? Well, I'm going to do the white line first. White line. Mm, a little bit more wire maybe. What's this? Just enough so I can get a good twist on it, I guess. So down a little bit more. Come on. All right, now we do it again. White line. White line. Twist them together nicely. Black line, black line, or no line, no line, I should say. Twist them together nicely. Now, take the solder. Soldering iron warm enough? Yep. We're just going to solder these together. Stop moving around wire. Get the 
excess solder wheel off. Bye! Solder bearings. So now they're soldered, and then I'm going to take my cutters and cut off the excess. So I just want the solder job. So now I can take that there and that one there and bend them. Bring my shrink tube up, up over it, like so. Hit it with a flame. Not too much to burn, just enough to shrink it. And there we go. Nice and secure, nice and safe. And now it's fixed. Now the roller controller is done. And that is how you can take apart and maintain a roller controller. Pretty easy. Awkward to work with, all these wires hanging out, but a nice little system. Have a good day.